Local Area Networks, Switching. So in the last module, we talked about local area networks in general, what they do, how we set them up, how we administer them. But in order to have a functioning local area network, one of the most important developments that we had was called switching. If you recall earlier on, we talked about the OSI model. And if you recall, the OSI model went from level 1 all the way up to level 7. Now, level 1 was the physical layer. And on there, we talked briefly about a device called a hub. Now, the problem with the hub was whenever data went from one computer into the hub, the hub spouted all of that data out to all the other computers on the network. This created a lot of broadcast traffic because the hub itself worked on the physical layer. All it did was repeat all of the bits that went into it out to all the other devices. But now we have something, and we've had for quite a while, a thing called a switch. And this allows for switching, which operates mostly on level two of the OSI model, which if you recall is the data link layer. Switching allows us to have a fully functioning local area network because it allows devices to talk using the MAC address or the physical address of the computer. So in this module, we're going to talk more in depth about what a switch is, how a switch operates, which I just touched upon a bit, and then I'm going to talk about uh, a couple advanced switches you need to know about for the Network Plus exam. These are the multi-layer switch, also called a layer 3 switch, or a smart switch, and then we're going to talk about a content switch, which, as the name implies, deals with the content in the packet, not just relaying the packet of data itself. So, a switch is an extremely important part of a functioning network. So let's think for a minute about a light switch. A light switch essentially has two pieces of wire attached to it. If we look at it like so. I'll put the little switch right there. And when the switch is flipped in one direction, the circuit is completed. When it's flipped the other way, uh, then the circuit is sort of broken, and so the light turns off. In a way, an Ethernet switch follows the same principle, except it's not only attached to one single wire and cable, but to many. Some switches can even have upwards of 200 cables attached to them. Now these Ethernet switches are used to connect many, if not all, of the devices on network, and it establishes a flow of data between them. This switch, like a light switch, makes a connection between two different cables and allows the data to flow specifically between those two devices. Now LAN switches are used to send data from a single device to another. Sometimes, uh, the, and sometimes even multiple devices. There are devices, as I said, called hubs, but these do something different. So what the switch really does here is it allows data sent from one device to go specifically to the other device that it's meant for. And it does this because it knows the MAC address that it wants to send to. Now it doesn't necessarily know where that MAC address is on the network. All it knows, and it puts this into the packet, remember we talked about that, it puts it into the header of the packet, the address, which would be sort of like the phone number or the social security number of the computer that wants to receive the data. The switch then has a table that says in each port, so if we had port 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, it would say the MAC address connected to each port. And so, when port 1 sends data meant for a MAC address, it knows, oh, I'm going to send that to port 5. Now, it could also do this for multiple. For instance, I'm going to send it to port 2 and port 5. The key difference here, as I pointed out in the very first slide, was rather than a hub, which broadcasts out to all devices, the switch creates a single switch between two specific devices and closes a connection. 
What this does, in effect, therefore, is reduce broadcast traffic and allow the network to run much more efficiently than a hub allowed. Now, there was a time when networking devices only served one purpose, and their functions were specific to that type of device. But over years, things have evolved. So now devices can do multiple things. Now, we see this multi-layer switch, or what you might also see as a layer 3 switch or a smart switch. What it does is it is not only a switch, it's also a router. This is the reason why it's called a layer 3 switch. I brought up the OSI model on the very first slide. Layer 1, physical. Layer 2, data link. And if you recall, layer 3, let's use our uh, mnemonic device. Please do not throw sausage pizza away. So this is the network layer. And if you recall, we mentioned briefly that routers, which we'll talk about in more depth later, operate on layer 3. That's because IP addresses operate on layer 3. So, a switch can not only look at the MAC address, but a multi-layer switch, one that operates not only on layer 2, but also on layer 3, can also look at IP addresses. So, because this switch operates as both a router and a switch, it can uh, send information between several different networks. So, here, for instance, I have network A and network B. And let's see, this PC wants to talk with the server on network B. In the old system, uh, unless, network, uh, unless the server was actually connected directly to the switch, there would be no way for the two networks to sort of speak to one another. But because we have a device here that's perhaps operating as a switch and a router, it can route the data onto a different network using an IP address. In some ways, you could think about this as the advent of the area code. When we had a phone number, which was only five digits, or uh, sorry, seven digits, such as um, 7235411, we could talk to anyone within our local network if we knew this number. When we added the area code, we were allowed to then dial out to other states. And then we were allowed, by putting an international code, to dial out to different countries. So we're allowed to go then outside of our specific network. And in this way, we're not just dealing with MAC addresses, we're dealing with IP addresses. And as we've talked about, IP addresses are assigned by, for instance, a DHCP server. And so as a result, they're more temporary, they're not hardwired onto the device, and it not only allows for routing, but it makes it a little more complex to figure out where a device is at any one time. We'll talk more about that in the next module. The important thing here to realize, though, is that a multi-layer switch operates both as a router and as a switch because it works on layer 3 and layer 2, which means it not only reads MAC addresses, but also IP addresses. Now the next type of switch I want to mention is something called a content switch. The name content should give away what we're about to talk about here. Now these are not really used as much as we see in today's networks because they're quite costly. But a content switch will actually analyze the data it receives and forward it based on its content only. So rather than dealing with simply an IP address or a MAC address, it actually looks at what's inside of the, of the uh, packet, if we have a MAC address here, and then we put an IP address on the outside of that in order to tell where to go, it's actually going to look inside and look at the data and determine where that content is going to go. These switches are also sometimes called load-bearing switches because they can evenly distribute data uh, based on the type of data there is and the appropriate destinations, which can alleviate stress on a single server or device. So for instance, if I erase all this for a second, let's say we have, for some reason, and let's say we have a router right here, which allows us to connect out to the internet, and then information comes in straight from the router to the content switch, and we don't know where the information is set for, 
Or let's say we have six different clients or servers, it doesn't really matter, that each could operate under the same sort of uh, IP address. For instance, we're going to put them all together or group them. The content switch can say which one it's going to go to based on the type of information it's receiving. So for instance, email is probably going to go to one computer, whereas web is going to go to another, whereas the FTP might go to another. And the packet itself doesn't have to know which computer it's going to. The packet just has to have an IP address and or a MAC address, and then the contents which itself, based on the content, is going to send that over. Another way to think about this is if I'm dealing with some sort of firewall, and I want the firewall to put certain types of data into a um, filtered area that needs to be scanned for viruses. So this is really going to help me alleviate uh, certain uh, processes and also help keep my network safer. And we'll talk about other devices that do this as well. But when we're dealing with the content, we're dealing with further up on the OSI model. So we're not just dealing with layer one or two or three, even we might even be dealing with layer four to some extent. So just to recap, we first talked about what a switch is. Uh, a switch, again, allows for a direct connection between two devices. Or more. The important thing to here to realize is that the devices communicate directly because the switch creates a circuit between those two devices within a box based on ports. Now how it does this is it creates a table defining which ports are connected to which MAC addresses. Again, a MAC address is the physical address that's built into a device when it's made. This is different from a hub, which just broadcasts everything. So if we were to create an analogy, we could say broadcast, which would mean all the data going out to every other device, is to a hub what unicast or multicast is to a switch. We also looked at some advanced switches you need to know about. The first is a multi-layer switch, which operates on layer 2 and 3. Our usual switch, because it's only dealing with MAC addresses, is dealing with the data link layer, which on the OSI model is layer 2. A multi-layer switch is also operating on layer 3. It also routes, so it is not just a switch, it's also a router. A content switch is even going further up the OSI model and analyzes the content in a packet to determine where to send it. This is also why it's called a load bearing switch because it helps reduce the load on a specific node by sending the data out to several different devices that can all deal with the same content in a device. Now, we're going to talk further about routing in the next lesson.